Hi everyone, this is Kim from Kim's Vinyl Expressions. Today I am going to stitch out the flatty doggy design from Designs by Juju. This design um, is available for five different hoop sizes, but for this demonstration, I'm gonna be using my six by 10 hoop. Um, what you will need is a um, tear away stabilizer and some batting if you want to use that or like um, some polyfill if you want to fill it. This is what it looks like um, finished. Don't mind this pointy part there. My machine had a little boo-boo but when I was doing that, but it is rounded just like here. Um, I put batting in the ears, the hands, and the feet because I didn't want to stuff it. Um, I just wanted it to be kind of flat. Um, I may stuff the belly and, and the head. I haven't decided yet because I have not sewn it up. Um, you'll sew it there or you can use fabric glue. Um, when you're finished, um, whatever you, ch however you choose to do that. But this is what it looks like. Um, you can pre-cut your fabrics if you choose. Um, the PDF instructions instructions show you, tell you um, what sizes you need for what. Um, but I don't really pre-cut my materials. Um, I just lay them and then I cut them when I'm done but that's your preference. Um, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, but for this one, I did not. So we're gonna start with um, the first step that we're gonna do is the ears first, and we'll go ahead over to the machine and I'll show you what to do. So this is what the design for the ears looks like in my machine. Um, it's only two steps, a little over 2000 um, stitches. So I am going, the first um, stitch is gonna be the placement stitch and we'll go ahead and stitch that. And um, I'm not gonna let the video go while the machine's stitching cause it'll take really, really long. Um, and I'll just keep showing you step-by-step step on how to do it. Okay, so as you can see, um, I did the placement stitch for the ears. Um, I didn't use white, I used a, I, I usually use a little darker color for my placement stitches and I know you can't see it too well in the video, but it is there. Um, so what you'll wanna do with the, if you're gonna use um, batting, you're just gonna lay the batting on here, uh, over, make sure the ears are covered. And then whatever fabric that you're gonna use for the ears, um, I just do it this way, but you want the two right face, the two right pieces face together. Um, so I just ironed mine and, and I'm going to lay it on here. And what we're going to do now, um, you'll put it back into the machine and then do your second stitch, um, to tack it down. Okay. So we got the ears done. Um, what you'll do from here is just remove your stabilizer, which I doubled this because I ran out of my medium weight. So I'll just pull all this off. Sorry, had a little malfunction there. So, we're just, like I said, we're just gonna remove the stabilizer. And again, as I said before, if, you're, if you choose to stuff your ears, then you don't need batting. Um, the batting is only if you don't wanna stuff it and you want the, um, the ears kind of flat which is what I did. All right. So now that we have all that done, you don't have to worry about if you leave a little tiny extra because we're going to turn them inside out anyway. Um, nobody's going to see it and mine is really thin, so can't feel it, <clears throat> but that should be okay. And get the scissors. Okay, so what you're going to do from here, you're going to cut these out 
and I just do this. I just cut them in half and work it that way. And then you'll just, I start in weird places. I'm a lefty. So just want to go close to your stitching, but not so close where you cut them open. And you just want to leave a little bit for seam allowance. And the fabrics that I use um, are just some fabrics that I picked up from Walmart. They have these bundles that have like five different um, designs in it. And I buy those a lot. I like those. Gives me a little variety. And then I'll go this way. And you're going to do this for both ears. Okay. And then you'll just cut. I just do it a little past this first stitch here. And since they're on an angle... I'll just do it like that. So that's that. And what you're going to do is turn them inside out. You just take that. Me, I always have a problem turning things inside out. So I'm going to try something different and see if this works. I got some chopsticks that I usually use. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this up here. And I'm going to turn this. Ugh, I know I did it. I tried it the other day. Oh. Now it's going to work. So I did that. <clears throat> and then what I did is little by little, I pull this down. Other than that, I have, I always have problems turning. And if somebody has any better way please let me know and I just keep pulling down see to me that was quick and easy <laughs> than trying to do it another way and then I just take the chopstick and just very lightly just make sure I pop out um, all the ends and the corners and where it rounds so and that's that and then what I do is I'll just go back over it and just iron it a little bit more so it's not wrinkled and you're going to do this for both of these <laughs> Sorry, that noise, my computer. My emails. And then you're going to do the same exact procedure for the hands and the feet. Um, they both, the, those um, will go in a five by, if you're doing the six by ten, um, the hands and the feet will actually go in a five by seven hoop. And, but you're going to do the same exact thing with that.
Okay. Okay, so we did that and we're gonna do the same thing. See, my chopstick has a little rounded edge there. I'm gonna put some duct tape on it just to make sure that when I do turn some things, I don't tear them because I've done that before. <clears throat> and the only reason I stick it in here first, because sometimes it's hard to separate the two um, sides of the fabric. So I have to get it started first and then I just slowly just start pulling it down. Oops. in there make sure get all the corners and rounded edges out and I just poke it a little bit not too hard don't want to bust open the stitches okay so these are the two ears and we're gonna do the same thing for um, the hands and feet. So we did the placement stitch for the hands and the feet. This is a five by seven hoop. Um, you can see there's four. And we're gonna do the same that we did with the ears. We're gonna put batting over it if you're going to use batting. If you're gonna stuff them, then you don't need, you can skip that step. And then the same thing with your fabric, the two right sides facing together. And I'm just gonna lay that on here and make sure that the ears are covered. Okay, and we're gonna put this back in the machine and um, tack this down. Okay, so we have our feet and our hands stitched out. And we, like I said, we're gonna do the same thing as what we did with the ears, remove the stabilizer. And then we're just going to cut these out like we did the ears. Ooh. I just always do this first. It's just easier for me to cut them. And just cut around these. Oh, and someone, um, I don't, I, I think it was in Design by Juju's group, told me that you can also, if you are going to use it for a pet toy, that you can put crinkle paper, um, stuff it with crinkle paper. I've never used that before. Um, not really sure what it is. I'm going to look it up, but, um. Apparently, um, my husband told me that that might be the crinkle paper. Um, the dogs, like, hear it 
when they're biting down on it. And we have a toy in the house for one of our dogs that my husband says he thinks there's crinkled paper in that toy um, because he can hear it whenever the dog chews on it. So that's another option. And I just forgot to mention that earlier. I love in the hoop um, designs. Those are my favorite designs to do. And I think it's just because it's a challenge for me sometimes. Depending on the design. I've done some really hard ones over the past few years. Um, but they're still my favorite to do. Okay, so same thing. We're going to turn these right side out. These look big enough that I can just, should be able to just use my finger and stick it in there and turn it right side out, but that never happens. That does not work for me either. <laughs> I tried that on the first one that I did and I guess my fingers are just a little too big, but I'm happy, I'm okay with doing it like this. It's, to me, it's just quick and not struggling. But like I said earlier, if anybody knows an easier way to turn things inside out, please let me know because I've tried so many things and no luck. <laughs> so I just decided to try a chopstick. And so far that's been pretty good for me. Goodness. Well, I know my thumb's a little too big, but Oh goodness, I put it in the wrong spot. Gotta get, I gotta remember to put it between the fabric I'll get back to that one. I don't know why I was having such a hard time with that one. Between the fabric. And since the batting is not so thick, it just feels really flat. I don't know why this one's giving me such a problem. My goodness. Sure, I get between the two fabrics. Ow. 
I don't know why this one's <laughs> causing me such a fit. Goodness gracious. This is another reason why I don't do live videos because I'd be really embarrassed if I made a mistake while while I was doing the live video. Let's see if I can pull that through. I'm not sure why this one's giving me such a fit. Probably because I did it between the fabrics by accident at first. I mean, okay, come on. Yay. All right, so there we go. We have the hands and the feet are ready to go. So now we're gonna go ahead and get started on the, um, the actual body <clears throat> of the dog. And I'll be right back. Okay, so we're gonna start working on the actual body now. Um, it is 15 steps and the whole body is a little over 6,000 stitches. So it's very quick and very easy. Um, in this one, step one and two will actually be placement stitches. So, um, just go ahead and, um, stitch step one and two onto your stabilizer. Okay, so now that we did step one and step two, um, you're going to take your fabric piece E, which is for the head part, and you're going to lay it up here and cover the head and then run step three which will secure that in place for step four you're going to get your fabric piece f as in frank and you're going to lay your fabric um, along this line and you want to make sure that sorry how to use my phone today because I'm having issues with my iPad. Um, so let me do this a different way. Take that off there. So you want to lay this and make sure you have a little bit. You want to lay it with the right side facing down. And if you have, if you're using a fabric that has a print on it, um, you want to make sure that it's upside down because after you uh, secure this into place, we're going to fold it over like that. So it'll need to be right side up. Um, so this is step four and you only want to have it you know, maybe about a quarter of an inch or so past that line. So we can just fold it down when it's done stitching. So step four, fabric piece F, lay it right side down a little past the headline and then secure it into place. So we got that secured into place. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull it down and fold it down like so. And we're gonna run step five, which will secure the body fabric into place. So now we're up to step six. We're gonna run a placement line for the patch. And that's the patch that goes around the eye here. So we'll go ahead and run that placement stitch, then lay your fabric down over it, and then step seven to secure it into place. So now that we got the patch um, tacked down, what you're going to do is just cut the excess fabric from the left side only, but make sure, um, cut it as close to the stitches as you can, um, but don't cut the stitches. And then we're gonna do a stat, oh, I'm sorry, a satin stitch over 
that. So we'll just, I'll just do this. always try to cut as close as I can and if you nick one little stitch it's not going to harm it because you're going to do a satin stitch right over it so it'll it won't come up I think that's good. Get my other scissor. Sometimes I think I have some just a little, oops, little too far out. And I've done that before. And then after it did the satin stitch, it showed through. So. Okay. I think we are good on here. Um, so we'll go ahead and put this back into the machine and run the um, step eight is going to run the satin stitch. So step eight is done. Um, it did the, step, the satin stitch around the patch. Um, step nine is going to do the eyes, both eyes and eyebrows. And step 10 is going to do the nose. Step 11 is going to do the placement stitches for the hands and the feet. And I'm going to do that in a little darker color so you can see it. Okay, so we got the placement stitches done for the hands and the feet. Um, I did it in a little darker color um, so we can see it better. And I don't know. I mean, it's there and it's there and up here and over here. Um, but that's where it'll put it. And what you want to do is <clears throat> you want to put the feet up this way and just, I, I just leave a little bit, um, maybe about a quarter of an inch past the line. And I try to make sure I get it centered in the line. That looks okay. And then this one, we'll do the same. And that looks okay. And you can use painter's tape um, to, ta to um, tape it down, or I use washi tape. That seems to work pretty good. Um, or masking tape. Whatever you want to use to hold it down, you can certainly use it. Whatever works best for you. So I just do that really slow. Make sure it doesn't move. Okay, I'm going to put a little extra piece on the end here. Okay, and then you're going to do the same thing for the hands. Um... And make sure that they're on the inside and do about a quarter of an inch or so. That looks okay to me. Just leave it like that. Okay, I'll tape these down. Whatever you use to tape it down, just make sure um, that it's something that holds well. Because I've had some, and I do it both ways here just because, just to have some double protection, extra protection, so it doesn't come up. 
Okay, so now that we got these ta um, taped down, we can go ahead and put it back on the hoop and you um, we'll do step 12, which secures these into place. Okay, step 13 is gonna be the placement stitch for the ears. Um, and it's pretty much basically the same. It's gonna um, do two placement stitches. And then we're gonna put the ears down. I'm gonna leave these taped down here because when we put the back piece on, I don't want these getting in the way of anything. So we're just gonna leave those taped. Don't take your tape off. And we'll go ahead and do the placement stitches. Okay, so we have the placement stitches for the ears. Um, I don't think you can see it too well, but it's here and here. And what you're gonna do is take your ears like this, and you just want to um, put them in between the stitches here. Uh, maybe do... Maybe like that. Just want to make sure I get them even. That looks kind of even to me. Uh, I'll go ahead and let me see something. I have very bad OCD, so I need to make sure like all my stuff is straight. Okay, I believe that's okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and tape these down. Okay, so make sure that's good. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and put this back into your machine and then um, step 14 will secure these into place and we'll be right back. Okay, so what we do now, this is gonna be the last step, step 15. We are going to fold these ears in um, you want to make sure you put them in so they don't get caught when they go back around. So you want to make sure it's not near the stitch lines. And then we're going to tape these into place. Okay, I believe that should be okay. Okay, and now your last fabric, which is fabric H, is going to be the back um, of this design. So you just take whatever fabric you're going to use. If you're using any fabric um, with any um, print on it, you want to make sure that the right side of the fabric is facing down, but I'm using a solid. So... I'm just gonna lay this here. And then I'm gonna pin this into place. I have so many different scraps, so I just try to use my scraps, so that's why they look, they're not cut straight or anything like that. But, 
and just make sure if you um if you're gonna pin it down i know some people use spray adhesive but i don't um so i i pin everything and then i'll just put another one here And I just turn it around to make sure that it's not in my stitch lines. Um, okay. Now, what I've learned, and I don't know on other machines, I have a Brother NQ1600. And because of the bulkiness here, I'm going to raise my foot on my machine. My foot can go up about, I think, eight different heights. Um so I'm going to put this on like a three and a half because I don't want if my if the foot comes this way, I don't want it to snag that. So it'll be a little high, but I usually stand by the machine anyway and make sure um, that it doesn't do that. But if you have a machine that you can raise your foot, then I would suggest doing that on this last step. OK, so we'll go ahead, put this in the machine and stitch it out and we'll be right back. <clears throat> okay, we stitched out the last step. I'm going to take everything off. Take it out of the hoop. Okay, and you want to remove your stabilizer. I try to get as much as I can out of here. And mine's easy to rip because they have, um, it's perforated, it has holes through it all. It's a very, I, I love working with this stabilizer because it's so easy to rip. Like you can see the holes in there. So if I run out of my heavyweight um, tear away, I just fold this in half. I mean, I double this up and it works just as good. I like it because it's so easy to tear off. Some are not. And I don't care about cutting the tails off the threads or anything because this is all going to be inside. So I don't really clean it up to, at all. <laughs> um, okay, so what we'll do now is we're going to just cut all around um, the thread. I mean, the stitching. Um, and you'll notice here that there's an opening that was not stitched. And that's so you can stuff it if you want to. And... Um, I'll show you what you'll need to do if you're going to stuff the head or or anything. So you're just going to cut around and you can leave some. It doesn't matter how much you leave going around. But just don't cut too close to the stitches.
Okay, so when I get here where the opening is, I'm just going to stop right there. <clears throat> and I'm just going to cut this off here. And I'll show you why. I know a lot of you may know how to do all this already, but there's always somebody new that's learning. So I just make sure I try to show everything just in case there is someone new who's just starting out or we were all new at once at one time. Sorry. I know how that is. going around. And I don't really care how jagged it looks or anything like that. Okay. So I'm just going to cut this a little bit. Uh, maybe that. Oh, that one was a, oh, I went a little too short on there. But <clears throat> I'll show you what the reason for that is. Okay, so now that all that's done, you are going to turn this inside out. And you need to make sure that you do it by the right, uh, I believe. That's it. Okay. So here we go again with the turning here. And then as I go, I try to take the tape off because it'll make it a little easier when I'm turning. So I just, as I go, I just remove all that. of the hands. Okay, and now I'll try to do the head here. Because the ears are in there, so it's a little hard. See if I do that, maybe pull one of the ears. Oh, maybe this wasn't as this wasn't as hard this time. Take all the tape off here. Ay, ay. Well, I got as much as I tried to keep it away, I got one little stitch there. So I'm going to have to fix that and I'll go back and fix that. See, that's the same thing that happened to me on my other one, but I'll pull all that out. I'll round that out more. Okay. So here we go. This is our finished doggy. Now, if you choose to stuff um, the head, what you'll do is <clears throat> stuff the head as much as you want and then pin or pin where you're going to stitch. Unless if you're only going to stitch. Okay, let me rephrase that. If you're only going to stuff the head, then 
put a pin somewhere to hold the stuffing in so you know where you're going to stitch. If you decide to stuff the whole body, then you don't have to worry about doing a stitch there unless you want to. You can separate it. Um, what I did here, for those who are new and don't know, um, when you're done with whatever you're doing, like I, I don't know, I haven't decided what I'm going to do with this one yet either. So I left this here, just some fabric out. So if I decide to stuff it or not, or leave it flat or whatever, um, you just go ahead and tuck these in like so. And what I usually do is I'll just run an iron over it really quick to make it really, um, <clears throat> to make it really flat. And you have two options. You can either sew this closed or use fabric glue. Um, if I decide to use fabric glue, I, I just use this, a little bit of it. Um, I do that on some of my in-the-hoop designs that I have to do that with. Um, or sometimes I'll sew it. But since I'm not really sure what I'm going to do right now, I'm just going to leave it. But this is the finished flatty doggy. And again, see, I gotta make sure you pull out those corners. I think we're good now. And there you go. That is your finished flatty doggy. And they're really cute and leave that flat i may stuff the head i may stuff the body i'm not sure but that is your finished flatty doggy if well thank you for watching my video while we um did the tutorial on the flatty doggy for juju designs if you have any questions feel free to comment on my video um you can look me up on facebook as uh, my name is kim lowenstein um, I'm in the Design by Juju group. I'm usually on almost 24-7. <laughs> um, you can get me on Facebook Messenger or tag me in a post or any questions that you may have. Um, so that was it. That was our tutorial for the Flatty Doggy. And you have a wonderful day.